So last time uh, we did the introduction to the decision trees, right? And we started uh, talking about decision trees in the classification, you know, the classification type, right? Where you have a binary uh, label or outcome, and then you build your tree to see, you know, what are the what, what, what are the leaves, right? You know, the terminal nodes, the, the leaves that will be the predictions for each of those uh, of those outcomes uh, uh, labels. Here, and the book is interesting that the book in a chapter A starts with regression, okay? I found that maybe classification is more intuitive, you know, to start with, but, you know, they, they, they started that way. And now we're going to start with where they were, where, where, you know, uh, uh, as, as the book, you know, chronologically is is, uh, is organized. So in the regression trees, the the main difference uh, from what we saw in the classification is that now our outcome is a continuous variable, right? Instead of a categorical one, it's a continuous variable. So we have a whole spectrum, right, of of values that we're going to you know we're going to try to predict. So uh, remember that you, we were uh, using the car seats uh, data set for this exercise. So instead of uh, creating a, a categorical uh, target uh, based on sales, now we can use sales as, uh, as it comes because sales is, is a continuous variable. So the first thing that we're going to do is see, you know, get a feeling, feeling of what is the distribution of that of, of that uh, of the target, you know, to get a sense if it is you know uh, more skewed to the right to the left or, or if it is Gaussian, right? You know, it has the the bell curve. So this is the histogram, right, of the sales as as, as you can see, it fairly, you know, has a shape, you know, the shape of the of that normal curve, you know, the the, the bell curve. So probably we don't we won't need any any any, any transformation for that particular uh, uh, outcome. Then also, it's always good to get a sense of how correlated, okay? How correlated are the predictors to that outcome, right? And we can get it from this uh, chart, the, you know, the correlation matrix, where you have all the predictors. Uh, we change in that, in this instruction, we change the categoricals to, uh, to numeric, so then we can do the, the Pearson correlation. And what, what we want to see is the last row, okay? The last row, which is uh, the sales, and then how are those predictors correlated with that outcome, with sales? As we can see, uh, remember in the last, in the previous meeting, that shelf location was the highest correlation. And in this case also, uh, doing the continuous uh, 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 predictor, uh, we see also that shelf location has a you know fairly uh, sorry, a fairly um, uh, high correlation 0.555. So it's, it's 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 a good predictor apparently. Then we have also price, but price goes on the other direction. It's a it's a negative uh, correlation. In other words, the higher the price, the lower the sales, and kind of. You know, we we, ex, we expect also that. Then we have advertising. We have also age. The the you know, the more uh, mature people probably they don't, they won't have any for a car seat because probably they don't have, uh, you know, the small small children. Okay, so we get a picture of that, and also we get a picture of how the predictors are correlated. But there's a caveat here. Remember that we're doing a regression, but a regression uh, using the decision tree. So the decision trees are more robust to this kind of multicollinearity because they don't predict by distance. They predict by, you know, splitting, splitting your, the data set into uh, a binary, a binary choice. Okay. And we're going to see it also the, uh, that behavior in the, in the, in the decision tree. Okay. So uh, the next step will be to uh, create our spec. Right, using the tidy model framework, uh, we set the mode instead of classification to regression, and then we do the splitting, right, of the data set. So we have we're going to work on the training, and then 
when we optimize that training data set that we have our model, then we're going to apply it to new data, to the split on, on, on the test data. So we're going to do a fitting. We're not going to do anything you know, extraordinary here or any you know, cross-validation of Bootstrap to get a feeling of how our decision tree, the, uh, uh, getting a baseline or how our decision tree is, is behaving. So we're going to do the fit, right? Uh, we're going to do the sales now, the sales, the outcome against all the predictors and the data set we're going to use is training. And this is the fitting model. But of course, you know, uh, you won't get any sense of what is going on with this output. What we, we can do then is uh, plot it, right? Let me see if I have the plotting here. Okay, it's kind of missing uh, the plotting. Um, let me check if I have the, the photo. Apparently, when I need it, 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 it just, you know, disappeared. <laughs> okay, let me see if I can find it here. Okay, uh, give me a moment. Okay, let me see. Let's get the thing. This is the files. Section three, figure. Okay, I think it was... Uh, Sorry, guys. Um, let's see if it's this one. Okay. Wow. Bingo. <laughs> I got it from the first one. Okay. So this is the the plot of that uh, of that output. Okay. The diagram. And as you can see, okay, this is okay. This is the wrong one. This is the classification one. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was too good to be true. So let me see if I can get that one. Okay, nah. okay. I'm I'm sorry, but it's going to take a while, you know, to get that output for some reason. I did, it didn't. It didn't. Uh, output maybe this. maybe if you go back to your R Markdown, you see the the bit the, the chunk of code, and maybe that yeah. that that chunk uh, that doesn't show up for for some reasons, like you set some options to do not show up the the, the photo. Let me the see. image or something else, or maybe the out just the outcome. Yeah, let me check if I can if I can see that one. Okay. Uh, ba, ba, ba. This is the R plot. Okay, that's a classification one. And then we have regression. Regression. Let me see. Okay, yeah. Uh that, that's what happened. No, the, the instruction is missing. Okay. The instruction for visualizing the, 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 the plot diagram is missing. But I can give you an idea of what you know you should be seeing. Okay, so let me let me do this. Okay. And this is from the from the R plot, uh, you know, uh, a manual. Okay. And this is that's something that you should be seeing if you if you uh, show the diagram, which is missing the instruction to diagram of that output. So what we're going to see is that instead of, remember that you know, in, the, in the classification, we had the label, right? We had the label, we had the, the, the percent of observations, and then we had a number that is, uh, you know, is, is associated with the, with the purity, with the purity of that, uh, of that parameter. In this case, there's no label because it's a continuous variable, right? So what we have is, you know, uh, a threshold of the measurement where the division of the tree is going to begin, okay? And there's, you know, uh, certain mechanics that the decision tree in regression mode uses to find the optimal threshold to try to divide that parameter. In this case, okay, they're using, um, I believe they're using, uh, 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 a, a, a data set here, you know, related to mileage, for example. And the threshold that is here in the label is 25. So in 25, you know, predicting that, that, that label, they're going to then splitting that parameter. And in this case, the price is going to be split between the ones that are greater than 9,447. 9, and then the other side will be less than that number. So the mechanics are basically the same. The only thing is that instead of you know, 
uh, assigning the first parameter, the root node, as the most pure, right? The most pure. Here, the parameter is going to be uh, from the regression is going to be the sum, the sum of the of the square errors. Okay, so that's going to be the parameter that is going to be minimized so that we can then assign the root node and then all the you know all the intermediate uh, nodes for that. Okay, so um, that's one thing that we'll have to you know we have to uh, um, we'll have to uh, address okay when you know we upload the the final version of the of the you know of of, of the chapter the the, the 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 notebook. Okay, so continuing, then we're going to use again the augment uh, function to collect the, the metrics for this and to see if there's a big difference between the training data set and the test data set. Because as we have seen in classification, when you see a big gap, that means that the, the model is overfitting. In other words, it's not generalizing uh, uh, enough. So in this case, in the regression, we have an estimate of the RMSE, which is our metric, okay, the room mean square error. We have uh, an estimate for the train of 1.57. And then for the test set, the unseen da data, we're going to apply it to the model. And we see that the RMSE is 2.18. So we have a gap there, okay, of about 0 0.6, 0 0.7, which tells, tells us that our model is overfitting. In other words, it's not generalizing enough, okay? So let's see if we can, uh, you know, uh, do this, okay? <laughs> okay, now, now now we got the plot. I I got I got a reverse, <laughs> okay? So I got the, the the metrics first, and then I got it. So you know I had to move it around. So this is the this is the, the the decision tree of the of that model. And as you can see, the threshold for the label for the for the outcome is seven point five, right? Which is precisely is the median of the sales uh, distribution. Okay, is is the fifty percent uh, the fifty percent uh, uh, percentile? Okay, and then I don't know if you remember last week that we talked about the root node, the most in the classification, the most pure. So here, the model uh, selected all such of location. Okay, and it's doing the same the same thing. It's dividing the observations. All the observations are going, are going through the root node. And it's dividing between the good shelf location, okay, that is the yes one, and then the ones that are bad or medium are going to be in the in, in the right side. And then the tree will, will keep splitting by different parameters, price, competitive price, age, et cetera, until you get you know your, your outcomes. Okay. So uh, that's good. We got the visualization. I, I thought I, I missed it. Okay, excellent. All right, so any questions so far? No, no, looks We're good. good. We're good, okay. Excellent. I, I have many questions. Okay. Okay, so then uh, the, uh, the, the, the result of this model, mm -hmm. uh, so the bottom line uh, is the result of the model, isn't it? Of the three bundle, as you said. Yes. Is it? Yes, but remember that this is a baseline. This is not our okay. final model because you have to uh, try to tune so that we can reduce that gap. Okay. Right now, you know, this is the this is the first try, the first try okay. to see, you know, how our model behaves without any cross validation or bootstrapping or anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is our baseline. So th this is what we have to improve. Okay. okay. Good. Good. Okay. So let's continue. Let's then try to tune the model to see if we can then, you know, uh, reduce that, that gap. So as we did in the classification, we're going to use the bootstrap because this data set is kind of a small data set. It has only 400 observations. And if we do a cross validation, we're going to be splitting something that is very small. So we're going to have a little bit of problem in the statistical significance of our, our metrics. So the way that we can do to expand this data set is 
you know, doing the bootstrap, right? Which is the sampling with uh, replacement. So we create artificial uh, resamples that then we can use to, you know, uh, uh, tune tune the model and get a, a better uh, statistical significance on the metrics. In other words, the, the variance, okay? So we're going to tune what is called the cost complexity, which is how complex will be our, our decision tree in terms of the depth, in terms of the minimum splits, et cetera. So it's one of the parameters that you should be you know, uh, doing first so we can see how well the complexity of the model will reach you know, that optimum, optimum level. And that's what we're doing here. So we're going to do the, you know, the instruction for the workflow, set the argument of co complexity to the tune. So the, 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 the tuning grid, you know, can choose different, uh, different parameters, choice of parameters. So then it can, it can do the, the optimization. We're going to do the bootstraps. Okay. This is the instruction. We're going to do a thousand, uh, probably in the, in, when you go to the chapter, I'm going to reduce that to 100, but I'm going to give a warning that the model should have enough bootstraps to get a statistical significance for the metrics. Okay, but for 100, so, you know, it can run uh, smoothly. Okay, so this is the tuning grid. Okay, we're going to be uh, using a grid regular, which is a grid search, remote grid search. And the range is going to be from minus five to minus one. In other words, the, the decimal, the decimal uh, uh, position is going to be from, let's say 0 0.0001 to 0 0.1. Okay, that's what the negatives uh, mean. And we're going to use uh, uh, 10, you know, 10, 10 uh, levels. That's how big that grid is going to be. Okay, and when we run this, we get this uh, auto plot, right? Okay, where we get the RMSC and we get the R squared, that's by default. And as you can see, the RMSC, we want to minimize it. The R squared, we want to maximize the R squared, right? Okay, which is the correlation uh, of, of the model. So as you can see, the complexity, those uh, values of complexity that the model choose, the lower they are, you know, of complexity, the lower they are, the better we get uh, both metrics, okay? So uh, in this instruction, we're going to select the, the best model, you know, for the, you know, for the uh, tuning. We're going to then finalize our workflow. In other words, we're going to uh, extract that, that model with the hyperparameters, and then we're going to feed it again uh, with the training to get that final fit of the model, right? And this is the final fit. And as you can see, let me see if I have, okay, I have the, <laughs> I, I have the plot here, okay? Uh, it doesn't look that different, right? Okay, we still have a little bit of complexity here, but then what we can do, and that's, you know, something that you can play with it. You can play with other, um, other parameters. For example, there's a parameter for the, the number of trees that you can, you know, you, you can output it. The, the, sorry, that's in random forest. Uh, I, I take it back. The tree depth, okay? You can tune the tree depth, uh, how, 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 uh, how deep that tree can, uh, can grow. And also you can tune another one called min uh, underscore n, which is the minimum observations that we're going to be using to split, to allow the splitting of the, of the of the nodes, if you have a mean underscore n that is, you know, high, for example, 20, 30, that means that if you don't have that number of observations, it won't split. So you have a more, you know, uh, less complex uh, decision tree. Okay. Okay. So this is the variable importance, right? Okay. It's good always to check, you know, which are the predictors that are you know, uh, moving our, our target. So uh, we have the price, we have the shelf location, we have the comparable price, the competitive price, 
we have the age and so forth. Okay, so these are the, the predictors that are really uh, a weighing, weighing on the on the on the outcome. Okay. And then alas, we want to see if we could close that gap, right? Between the the metric from the training set and the metric from the test set. In this case, we got a lower in the train, we got a lower. Uh, estimate of the RMSE, which is good, okay, 1.38. But still, in the test set, the unseen test, we got an estimate of 2.03. So the gap is still, is still stubbornly, is still there, okay? So we have to do a little more uh, tuning uh, to see how far we can close uh, that gap. Remember that decision trees are very, uh, you know, they usually don't generalize too well, okay? That they're easy to explain as the book, uh, you know, the book gives you uh, uh, a, a summary at the end of the pros and the cons, right? Of the decision trees. And they're very easy to explain, um, but the caveat, you know, the, 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 the weakness of the decision tree is that they are very, uh, they don't generalize too well, okay? And that's part of the design of the, of the algorithm. And also, uh, minor changes in this, you know, in this, uh, in these predictors, uh, have a big, a big uh, change in the in the outcome. Okay. All right. So, any questions so far? Good. Uh, not for, not not for now. Not for now. Okay. Yeah, I follow. That's good. You're following. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So. Uh, let's talk about the random forest. Okay, so what are random forests? Well, in a in a in a simple way, random forests are a bunch of uh, trees, right? Okay, that's that, that's how you define a forest. You know, in in in, the, in nature, right? You know, a bunch of trees in a location, etc., and you have a forest, right? But here uh, we have something called okay, something called bagging, and we have to you know a little bit more about that. Let me see if I can uh, get my get my diagram. Okay. So uh, this is a random forest that is kind of simplified. And what we have is that remember that the decision tree, the weakness is that it doesn't generalize too well. In other words, you know, uh, usually it tends to overfit. Uh, we can optimize the train data set, but then in unseen data, we get a higher, a higher uh, metric, okay? And that's not, you know, what we want. So the random forest, in terms of that high variance that we're seeing, you know, because of the, of the gap on the metric, what it's going to do is that it's going to generate, uh, you know, uh, instances of different, different trees, different decision trees, right? And what it's going to do is that depending on the outcome, Right. Depending on the outcome of each of those uh, of those trees, is going to get a voting. A, 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 it's, go, it's going to vote in terms of, for example, if we have three, as the diagram is saying, if we have three instances of the of that decision tree, and then we have in the binary in the classification uh, 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 problem, we have a decision tree that goes to one one class, right? You know, class A. In other words, you know, the car seats, remember the high, it was more than eight or less than, less or equal than eight. So one of the trees is going to go to one of the classes, but then other trees are going to go in the opposite direction, you know, in a, in a binary uh, classification. So random forest, what it does is that for each instance is going to get a vote and depending on the majority, then that's going to be the prediction, okay? And it's going to do it for, you know, lots of uh, instances. So that's how usually a random forest works. But there's a, there's a thing called bagging, right? And bagging, let me see if I have here. Okay. Can you see, can you see my screen? Yeah. You see, I can see it. Okay. So bagging 
is a technique is very similar to what we have seen in, in the bootstrapping. Okay, the bootstrapping, which is the random sampling uh, with, reset, uh, with replacement. That's basically what bagging is. Okay, and the random forest already incorporates this this technique of bagging. You don't have to do anything. You know, it's, it's part of the of the algorithm. So what it's going to do is that it's going to sample the data set for the training, right? For the training data set, which is the one that we're trying to optimize, is going to random sample, sample those observations and it's going to use it for those instances, okay? Those instances where he's going to create a number of trees, right? And get the votes. Once he get the votes and the majority, then is going to do a prediction of how, you know, the probability of how class A for the observation is, you know, is if it is class A and other observations is going to tend to class B. Okay, so in that, because it's doing the random sampling and it's doing the voting, it kind of smooth, smoothes the, the, uh, the outcome. In other words, we have more data to get a right prediction, something that in the decision tree we don't have. So let me also talk about a little bit about boosting because that's going to be the other model that we're going to be discussing if we have the time. Boosting is like bagging, but like the diagram says, it incorporates what is called a weight, okay? So it's going to be weighting those observations that have a better, you know, a, a better performance, in other words, that have a better prediction to that training data set. And that's basically the, the difference in bagging, the weight is, 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 is equal to each of those uh, uh, sampling observations. In the boosting, we're going to be weighting. So usually boosting gives you a better uh, you know, chance of prediction than bagging, okay? And we'll see that one of the models that we usually use for boosting is what is called the exibus model, okay? Good, all right. So let's go back to this, okay? And let's see what we can do with uh, the random forest first, okay? So we're going to do, uh, there was a change that I tried to do with the package that uh, uh, Emil, because I'm following the Emil scripts on tidy models. Uh, there's a package that is more, uh, that is faster. Uh, usually it's, it's faster, but it's called Ranger, okay? So probably in the, in the one that I'm trying to uh, upload to the, to the book, uh, you're going to see the Ranger. But now we're going to use the Random Forest, which is the one that Emil is, is using. So in this one, if you can, you know, read a little bit about the description of what we're trying to do, we're going to use, again, the, the car seats, right? The car seeds, we're going to do a regression here. But then for the bagging model, we're going to uh, use M try. M try is the number, the number of predictors that are going to use at an instance. So you don't have to use all the predictors. For example, if we have, in this case, I, I believe it's 11 predictors, right? So we can set M try to less than those predictors to get a more varied. Uh, in, uh, instance for our our voting. If you set that M try to all the columns, the pot, the dot columns, then you are using what is called a bagging model. That you're using all the predictors, and they have equal weight to be uh, you know to be used in the in the algorithm. Okay. So in yeah, the bagging uh, spec, uh huh. Go ahead. The the M try is mentioned in the book, no? Uh, uh yeah. It should, it yeah. should be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, uh, the, the, that, that's the part when we subset the number right. of predictors. So that Correct. mentioned, and, and you have the videos from, from the others, they explain uh, yes. the, the procedure of this M try. And that's one parameter that you can tune also, okay? Because sometimes uh, if, if we don't, if, if we let that, M try without any definition, there's a default, okay? There's a default that the model will use. And for example, I believe, you know, 
maybe maybe I'm I'm not writing this, but I believe that I, that I saw it somewhere that the random forest this this package for regression it uses the square root of the them try the square root of the predictors of the number of predictors. So if the number is let's say eleven, take the square root of eleven, and that's going to be the default. In the classification, I believe is uh, divided by three. Okay, the number of predictors divided by three, and that's going to be the M try. But in this case, just to showcase what how the bagging works, we're going to force that M try so that it, it selects all the columns, all the predictors. Okay. So for that, we use the the specification, the specification M try equal to dot dot columns. We use the random forest uh, package with importance equal to true. In other words, we're activating so that it incorporates the variable importance uh, data that we need. And we set the mode to prediction. And this is our baseline, right? The bagging, you know, the bagging fit in the model without any uh, validation. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so in this model, the outcome is kind of similar, right? To what we saw in the decision tree, but it has, you know, lower, it has lower the, the estimate of the RMSE. So that's good, right? You know, before we had uh, numbers like 1.38, 1. point something. Here, uh, we have 0. 0.668, so we're going in the right direction, right? But still, with the test data set, then we have a gabber again. So if we leave that random forest as it is, for example, with other predictors doing the bagging model, uh, as you know, uh, with other predictors, uh, we're going to tend to overfit again. Okay, so we're going the right direction, but we still have that gap. And because it's a regression, right? You can you know plot the 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 outcome, right? The the actual uh, number of sales with the predictor to see more or less. If they are closer, you know, to that uh, theoretical line where it's the perfect uh, prediction, right? And as you can see, the model is not that bad, right? It has equal number, more or less equal number, below or above that that, that line. But still, you can see—I don't know if you can see my mouse—but you can see that there's some that are kind of way off, okay, of the uh, of the line. Okay, so. Let's go on. We have our variable importance again. And now with the random forest, remember that decision tree for the regression, we had price as the most important. Here, we're going, going back to kind of a classification model when we have the shelf location. So they kind of agree, even though this is a regression model. And then we got the price, we got the competitive price, age, et cetera. So it was kind of, you know, uh, they, they switch a rule there on the shelf location and price. All right, so let's see. Okay, I have it right there. Okay, I, I, I know I, I read it because you know I put it in the in the in the description. Uh, by default, the random forest for regression trees it divides by three. So I I I I, I, I explained it backwards uh, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, the M try is going to be set by default uh, p uh, divided by three. Okay. And for classification, it's going to be the square. Okay, so it's kind of backwards. Uh, we're going to use M try equals six. Okay, because we have eleven predictors, so let's let's use kind of half half of them. Right, it has to be an inter an inter. So let's let's uh, try with uh, M try six. Okay, the same parameters, the same fitting, and see what happens. Okay, as you can see, uh, we still have more or less, you know the same numbers so we haven't progressed at least in the in the overfitting right and uh, we have the plot etc so let me see what we have here okay we had the variable importance uh so that the model didn't change that much so one of the things that we can do and is you know uh is is for for you to try to investigate uh Maybe we can do, you know, the number of trees, okay? Tune the number of trees, tune the number of the minimum uh, observations, you know, to do the splitting, 
uh, like a decision tree, et cetera. So there's a couple of parameters that you can play with, okay? But this is just, you know, uh, getting a, you know, a, a first a swim, right? To what is going on. Okay, so let's go to boosting, which is the, uh, we're, we're reaching already the, the, the last uh, uh, chapter uh, of, the, of the book. So here, remember that with boosting, we're doing bagging, but we're doing it weighted. So we're going to weigh some of those uh, outcomes, right? Some of those uh, random samplings, we're going to weight it against that, that prediction. So we can get a better, a better, what is called a better learner. Okay, from, from those instances. Uh, so we're going to use the, the SGBoost package and the instruction for the tidy models is going to be the boost on the score tree. We're going to grow 5,000 trees here, but we're going to limit the growth of the depth of that uh, tree to four. In other words, it's going to be kind of a shallow uh, uh, tree. We're going to use the regression. I'm going to do the fitting. Okay. Okay, so here, uh, what do you see here compared to the random forest? The drain is very, uh, <laughs> is went down and the, the testing uh, <laughs> went up. Right. In other words, we are really, you know, way off, way off the, the you know, the estimate is basically almost zero, right? In other words, there's a perfect fit in the, in the training uh, for the XG boost. But in the test data, we see that there's has been no, basically no improvement, okay? So how can, how can we fix that? Okay, so let's go to the tuning, right? That's what we have been doing here. We're going to, you know, doing a baseline and then try to see with the tuning, try to see if we can fix that thing. So again, we're going to split our, our data set we're going to do the bootstraps, okay, a thousand times. And then we're going to use something that is from the fine tune uh, package, okay, which is what is called a, a, a tuning, a tuning a racing. So what tuning racing does, and uh, let me see if I have the, yeah, I have the reference here from the, you know, from the Tari Models uh, manual. So what it does is that Instead of doing a grid search or a random search, okay, of, you know, you're are going to validate all these points and then we're going to see, you know, which is the best one. The racing, what it does is that after each evaluation or the resample is going to eliminate the ones that are unlikely to give you, you know, the best results. So in other words, it's kind of uh, the most similar that I can, you know, picture this is more like a Bayesian. Uh, optimizing, but instead of the Bayesian model, we're, we're, we're getting our, our threshold from the ANOVA uh, model, okay? So, uh, so we're going to do that. Uh, it's very efficient, by the way, uh, the tuning race, because it's going to el it's keep eliminating certain resamples that are not giving the best results, okay? So it's going to always choose the best, the best one. And let me see if you can see it here, okay? Uh, I, I put the TikTok uh, uh, package, so to see you know, more or less you know, how much time you know, it, it, it spent. I spent around 379 uh, seconds. Uh, yeah, divided by 60 should be about uh, six, seven minutes, which is good, okay? And in the output, when you, if you run this, okay, when the output is going to tell you, okay, uh, I got, you know, these resamples, right? Uh, I, I got a, a, the, the grid, the, the grid for the tuning, etc. I got the resamples, and then it's going to tell you, okay, I'm, I'm in, I eliminating this because of the, you know, is 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 not giving you the, the best one. It's going to eliminate until it gives you the the best result. Okay. So let me see. Uh, this is the plot for the racing. Uh, you can you cannot see it very well. You know it's kind of faint here, but the action that the racing is occurring is right here. Okay, I don't know if you can see my mouse. It's right here, where you see all these models, and then they start eliminating until 
you know, they get to a, to a stable, to a stable uh, 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 resample, okay? So our best model for this one, it was this model, okay, with uh, M tries, we tuned the M tries for five uh, predictors. The trees, the number of trees is going to be 1,145. And the minimum, the minimum split, uh, the minimum observations required for splitting is going to be 30. So this is basically the hyperparameters that we're getting from the best model. And as you can see, this is the mean of the bootstraps is 1.39, which compared to the baseline of 0 0.0001, uh, that mean really makes, now makes a little bit more sense, right? Okay, because now we're trying to get, you know, closer the gap to the test one. So this is just showing uh, the best model. We're going to select that model, and then we're going to do our last fit, okay? Which we're going to incorporate that model into the, the training, and then do the last fit, which is going to incorporate also the test uh, data set, okay? It's going to do it all at once. So as you can see, in the metrics, right? In the metrics, for the for the last fit, we have, okay, we have a mean here. This is the training, right? The training a mean of one point three nine two nine seven seven, right? So in the last fit, what is doing here, collecting the matrix? This is the, this is the the the, the matrix for the test, for the test data set. And as you can see, it's almost identical to the trained data set. So the SG boost allow us to close that gap, okay? During the tuning, close that gap between the training and the test data set. And now we have a good generalized model, okay? Questions? All right, so uh, we check the feature importance and here the price is the one that is really dominating uh, our, 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 you know, the, the one that is way more on the, on the outcome, on the sales, then we have the shelf location, uh, good and bad. Now we have, you know, a division, right? Not just the shelf location, but we have a division that good is a better predictor than uh, shelf uh, location bad then competitive price, age, et cetera. So we get more information. And that's it. Bravo. Thank okay. You. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, at least we did it, you know, with the XG boost, at least we got a, a, a good model, okay? Because as you saw in the random forest and the decision trees, we still had that gap, right? So the SG boost was the one that really, you know, got us to the finish line. Okay. Great. Okay. So let's uh, go forward and see what's going to happen next week. Mm -hmm. And see that uh, there, there would be Jenny Smith with uh, support vector machines. But we're not sure about that. So uh, we'll see if she does. Otherwise, we may want to split the chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. L like first part, second part, and do this thing. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you very much. See you next week. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Take care, guys. <laughs>